Let's continue on with my UNSC Marine Armor build. Yeah, if you're a bit confused, it's understandable. It's been about 18 months that I've worked on this project, so let's get back to work. So welcome back everybody, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. And yes, it's been about 18 months since I started the idea and some of the work on an entirely 3D printed UNSC Marine Armor from Halo 3. And now that I'm finally getting back to it, well that's not going to be entirely true. Um, most of it, like all the solid armor parts, is still going to be 3D printed like this is like the lower back armor right here. But the softer parts, for example, this is part of the thigh armor, was originally going to be TPU 95A as well as kind of the waistband area, but the honest reality is the TPU 95A is great for like drive belts for a combat robot. Like this, oh, oh good, like this, but not things like this. So for the flexible parts, they're going to go back to EVA foam, and I've already cut a few of them out if you watched my video where I work with the um, oscillating multi-tool. So let me do that with the part I just threw on the ground, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to cut out the ab plate here. It's based on the 3D printed TPU 95 mess, and I'm going to be using my oscillating multi-tool. Now I did a whole video on this, and it's glorious 15 frames per second, but this guy equipped with a carpet cutting blade right here is a dream when it comes to cutting out EVA foam. Now there is going to be some new 3D printed parts for this process, even though these are all going to be EVA foam now. We have these little slots right here for the various straps that connect all the pieces together. I want to do some 3D printed inserts in here to one, make them look nice, and to give them just a little bit more strength. So let's jump up to the computer and model that now. So this little piece here, this is what we're going to be making inside of Blender. To start off, I'm going to just create something that represents this empty space where the strap's going to go. Now leave it right there, I guess. Let's add another cube, and we're going to start building our actual loop structure. Now what I need to do is create this kind of flange part. I'm going to start using something called the Measure It plugin. So if you don't have this enabled, it comes with Blender. You just have to turn it on. You go up to Edit, Preferences. On the Add-ons tab over here, you want to search for Measure It. You can actually see that already selected. Measure it, all one word. Hit the little checkbox next to it, and we're good to go. This is going to let us give exact measurements, or at least view exact measurements for various parts of our mesh. So here's how this next step is going to go. I am going to select each of the four faces that are kind of in this top ribbon area and extrude them out. Now for the top and bottom one, I want to make sure they stick out about six millimeters. So what I'm going to do, select a vertex in the corner here, and then select kind of the matching one on the end of the piece. And on this window over here that we've been using to punch numbers in, let's jump over and choose View. And there's a section called Measure It Tools. Click Show, and then we got to make a segment here to measure things. So press this Segment button. And you're going to see a number pop up here, 8.03 meters. Now, for 3D printing purposes, this is actually 8.03 millimeters. Now, what I want to do is move in these two faces on the end here until both these numbers are about 6. What I'm going to do now is take these end pieces right here, the, each of the ends that we just moved, and I'm going to scale them apart. Now I need to line up this vertice set, this vertice, this vertice, and this vertice set. So let's box select all of them. We're going to do my fun trick here that someone in the comments told me about. Press S for scale, X because we're moving the X direction. Press 0, and that just lined up all those vertices. Do the same thing over here on this side. We're going to create some more segments, so let's select that vertice there, and then this one on the end, so we have this line segment edge selected. Hit the segment button, and do the same thing over here. We want to move in all these vertices closer to the middle so that this value here is 6. And then same thing over here. Now we need to start merging some vertices together. So. If you think about it, this vertice right here, we want to merge it with this one in the corner this one and the bottom one in the corner and repeat that process around the entire mesh. 
All right, so what we have done here is created some non-manifold vertices. What has happened is, because we merged these two faces together, there's an internal face in here, and that could cause some trouble with slicer programs. So let's switch over to face select up here in the upper left-hand corner. And you can see there's a little circle right there. We want to click on that to highlight the face, press X, and choose delete faces. There's going to be one more of those in each of the three other corners. Repeat the process. Okay, we're almost there. But first, we've got to jump back into object mode. And we want to go back up to our item tab over here in the right-hand section. Because what we want to do now is apply a bevel to these corners. But before we can do that, we've got to fix some Blender math things. So you see here where it says scale, now it's 3.5, 16, 1.1. Those numbers are a result of our operations we've been doing all along. And for the most part, they don't matter. But at this point, they kind of do because the bevel option really needs these numbers to be all ones to basically do what you expect it to do. Press Control and the A key, and you'll bring up the Apply menu. Choose Apply Scale. Nothing visual should really happen, but now you're going to notice that the scale factor should be 1 for X, Y, and Z. Press tab again to jump back into edit mode. This time we're going to go to edge select up here in the upper left hand corner. And we want to select these four corner edges that are going to end up being beveled. Press control B to begin the bevel process and start moving your mouse cursor. Now, first of all, what you're seeing isn't so much a bevel, but a like just a line, um, which is fine, we'll fix that in a moment. What you don't want to do is you don't want to make sure anything weird starts overlapping itself. So, for example, if I go really far, see how things are kind of overlapping up there? That's bad. <laughs> so what you want to do is probably once this, see how this little corner here approaches this other corner, like right there, I'll hit stop. I'm looking right here, by the way. I can't really point out because of how Blender works. But you want to move it so that this corner almost meets this corner and nothing else is overlapping, and you're good. Now, in the lower left-hand corner, this thing popped up for me, but you might see it look like this. So click on this, and then you got a whole bunch of numbers. Offset is what we were just changing. Segments, this is how we're going to make it look to be a bit more rounded. So just press the little arrow key to the right side here, and this is going to add more segments to your bevel, and therefore it's going to make it look a little bit more rounded. I mean, if you get up to like 10, that'll probably look pretty good for myself. So press tab to get out of edit mode, and now I've got something here that looks like we want to create, but we need to finish cutting the hole for the strap, right? So let's go back inside here, and there's our strap object we initially created, all kind of contained in there. If you can't select it from the outside, you can always choose it from your menu over here in the upper right hand corner. I want to press S and then Z and scale it up really big like that. And then in the object properties, I'm going to just call this strap placement. I already have another object called strap, so that's why I'm not calling it that. And then let's select our little flange piece here. We'll go to the modifiers properties and add modifier, choose boolean operation. By default, difference is selected, and for object, choose strap placement. And what this is going to do is take our flange object here and cut out the volume of the strap placement. Um, we can go to wireframe mode, and that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to hit apply, click on our strap placement object here. Press H to hide, and let's return to solid mode, and that looks pretty good. To export this guy as an STL file, go up to File, Export, STL, and you'll save it out wherever. The key thing you need to know here is there's a checkbox over here that has selection only. It might live down here, it depends on what your screen layout is. By default, it is not checked. You want to make sure it is checked, otherwise you'll export everything in your scene and that's not what you want. So select that, choose you want to save it, hit export and then go ahead and load it into your slicer and 3D print it up. Now comes the part where I have to transfer over the details of these little circle things that are on the thigh armor. What I've done so far is drill a hole to the middle of each of them so now I can align the old 3D printed TPU 95A version up and I'm going to mark each spot 
with this automatic center punch, which is really overkill, so I'm just going to gently push in. Got the four spots marked. Now using this washer, I'm going to very carefully trace the shape of the hole I'm going to cut out of the piece. I'm going to repeat that process for all four of these, and then I'm going to cut that hole out very, very carefully. Now I've got to make the inside little detail pieces, and for that I've got a smaller washer. I got four little squares out of the two millimeter foam, and then here are the little circles I just cut out. I'm going to glue one of these circles in the middle of each of these squares and glue these squares to the bottom of the thigh armor. Got a couple of the foam pieces here done. At least they're all that I need for this part of the build anyway. Let's get some of the edges cleaned up and the multi-tool is coming back out, but we're going to be using the sanding thing of it, the sanding triangle, whatever you call it. So while we're waiting for some 3D printed parts to finish up printing, there are a few more things we can do and this actually to work with some older 3D printed parts and that's this guy right here. The belt loop, it kind of goes over on your side over here, hopefully I just didn't just stop my recording, good. Um, and it's the thing that holds up the thigh armor to your waist and all that fun stuff. Now I made this back in episode 2 of this series I believe, link in the show notes if you want to see the blender tutorial and the whole process and assembly and all that. But I've got one more over here for the other side that I never assembled. Let's work on that right now. All right, I've got my little 3D, I got most of my 3D printed little belt loop detail things right here. It's time to put them into the leg armor. And of course, there's two halves to each one, so let's glue them together and see how it all looks, and of course, how well it functions. So I 3D printed up six of these pieces, which of course, there's two of them to build a set. Thinking that would work for both armor panels. Of course, if I need two per slot. I need to print up 12, not six. All right, well, small math fail. Well, not even math fail, small counting fail. Let me get those printed up, just assemble them off camera, and we'll move on to the last step. Now, we're down to the last step for today's video, which is to start fitting everything on my body. So I've got a whole bunch of these nylon straps here. Of course, you've got all the different pieces. They've got to figure out how they all go together. And they all get strapped in various ways with clips, all that fun stuff. So now I've got to figure out all those sizes of all the pieces. That's about all i got for today. I mean, obviously there's a long way to go, but it's off to a good start with the EVA foam parts and some of the 3D printed parts that we got sticking around here. And then of course, here's a new Nerf MA40 Halo Assault Rifle. <laughs> Could make a nice little visual functional addition to the costume. But uh, one important note about Nerf blasters and cosplay, it is very important to check the rules of whatever convention you're going to. A lot of times, at least the ones that I am go to, there's rules prohibiting that any kind of weapons you have are not able to fire any sort of projectiles and they can't even be based on things that could fire projectiles. So for example, the Nerf MA40 um, Halo Infinite Blaster, what do you want to call this thing, assault rifle. Even if I were to make this thing inert and plug up the barrel to where it can't fire, it's still in violation of many rules because it's based on something that could fire a projectile. So, Long story short, down the road I'm going to be making my own 3D printed versions of the Halo weapons to go with the costume that do not fire anything just for that reason. But like I said, there's still a whole lot of more armor to go on here. We got some thigh plans, knee things, shoulders, what, down here, whatever you call those, forearms, thank you, brain, and of course a chest plate, helmet, and probably some stuff on the back. But that is it for today. I am talking long enough and my microphone is about to fall out of my pocket, which would be a very bad thing. So thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. 
I would say go back and check the previous episodes in the series, but those were a long time ago and they weren't particularly good videos. So probably don't do that, but I'll put a link to the playlist just in case you really want to see how some of the 3D printed parts were actually made. But until next time, well, have a great week. <laughs>